Well, hello everybody. Hey, everyone. This is another bonus Saturday. Yes, it is. And we are so excited about this guest. Yes. And so the name of our topic today is called Inescapable. Mm. Inescapable. So Jasmine, can you tell me what inescapable means? You're not able to escape from a situation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it dilemma. Yeah. So it means that you're in a, it's it, you're incapable of escaping, mm -hmm. um, and you're uh, unable to be avoided or denied. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like no matter what you you can't escape it. Right. And so with that being said. We want you to welcome our guest today. Yes. Her name is Becca. <laughs> now, this is, I want to tell you, um, it, can you see her coming on in? She's, yeah. she's hobbling, hobbling a little bit. <laughs> and so there was something she experienced that she just was not able to escape. So, Becca, we want you up here really yes, close to us. Okay. Yeah, here we go. And, you know, another, before we go on, Becca, can you get really close to the screen? <laughs> I want you to see her gorgeous blue well, eyes. They're, look at they're that. gorgeous. They're <laughs> beautiful. You. you inherited them from your, your grandma, you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. Came down from hers. But yeah. anyway, she's gorgeous. And I found out that she is a, she is a cook. She loves to cook. Ooh. And there was a chef that mentored you, right? Mm -hmm. So uh -oh. um, the girl can cook. <laughs> but anyway, Becca, I want you to tell me about something that happened to you last week. She was going to do the broadcast with us. And please stay tuned. She's got an incredible yes. story. Um, uh, but anyway, she couldn't because she had a skiing accident, a skiing oh, accident. So Becca yeah. talk really out and, and I forgot to tell you, but just look over here when you're talking to him. Okay. Look okay. At yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, so what happened to you? Well, I was going down the ski slope. I'd been practicing on the bunny hill and thought I was ready to go down the, the green slope, which is the easy slope. <laughs> right. Simply <laughs> enough. But um got started going down and was going too fast and i my legs went opposite directions oh. and my knees turned in and i just ended up laying kind of in the middle <laughs> of the slope like uh, oh painful. yeah um, it, it was it was yeah. uh, so i'm i'm hopping along a little bit funny on one leg but was it worth it? it was it was totally <laughs> worth it and i'm going back i'm gonna, hey, you're, you're gonna conquer. Yeah. you know why because what is that three-year-old little girl come breezing past mm -hmm. you oh, oh yeah. just like the worst yeah. feeling yeah. it's yeah. Like, like really yeah. so yeah. you could not avoid you could not escape that right when right. it started happening right i mean it was like there's nothing i could do yeah. it's just gonna happen yeah once it set in motion it was oh yeah i was rolling <laughs> Guys, they, yeah, go ahead. They, when they say to pizza, I don't know, mm -hmm. like put your. It doesn't work like that. No, sometimes. it didn't. And my skis went across each other. Oh yeah, which so is then like I the was worst. Stuck like that and couldn't move. Oh now. yeah, skiing it's, is no joke. So. Right. Yeah. And it's all happening so fast. It's just, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to tell you real quick. I remember years ago when our kids were just oh probably. 10 or 12 and 13, 12 and 14, something like that. They were at that age that they could have been embarrassed, you know, get embarrassed <laughs> right. easy if, if their parents did something. Yeah. Uh, so we went uh, um, ice skating for the first time. And so, you know, we were just oh, going to conquer it and have a good time. <laughs> right. Well, we, I mean, it was like I could ice, I could uh, roller Whoa. skate. Oh, yeah. But it's ice skating is not, it's not the same. <laughs> not and not. so Rick and I were trying to do it, you know, and it just felt like the floor was moving <laughs> under us. And I'll never forget, I mean, we fell and I mean, we <laughs> laughed and, and at one point I, I finally started getting a little bit of the hang of it and I started to grab his hand and said, don't touch me, we won't fall. <laughs> so at the very end, they wanted our pitcher. And so I was acting like, you know, I was just going to be professional, uh, look, look professional <laughs> for this uh, pitcher. So, you know, I put my arm around him, I threw my leg up on him, like, oh. you know, to show my, my yeah. uh, yeah, ice skates. Skills with it, yeah. And he leaned his hand against the padded wall, and when he did, we fell, and the oh. wall fell like dominoes oh. all around the oh. ice skating rink. Oh. <laughs> and our kids were embarrassed at us, but we we fell down and we could not get up. I mean, it was <laughs> it was unavoidable. I mean, we could not get up. We were laughing so hard. But anyway, that was my my story with the ice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just I think this is so amazing because there was a time in your life when you felt you know, you couldn't escape it. You couldn't mm -hmm. escape what you were going through. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no matter what, you kept going through situations that you couldn't get out of, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so I want Jasmine, if you would, to read Psalms 139, seven and eight. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. So in the midst of all the things that you went through, beginning when you were a child, you know, is, you know, you can look back now and see the hand of God. And girls, if you'll just lean your head. So we found a picture yes. that's, that's like yes. the, the hand of the Lord coming in look from the sky. Yeah. And an actual 
sky and in the I mean it looks like a hand, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, let's say it's called the hand of God. The hand yeah, the hand of is Exactly. The hand. So but that's what he does and we'll learn more about that. But Becca, I want you to tell us your story and I thought it was interesting, even when you were you were raised in a I mean your home as a baby, it was volatile. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a lot of um, just turmoil. Mm -hmm. And even as a baby, tell me that you know, you didn't even smile. No. no so so uh, tell us all about it really loud. Okay. Uh, so the situation at home was so violent and volatile that my response was just a very solemn child. Most mm -hmm. babies have smiled, you know, within just a month or a few months old. And uh, I didn't until I was over a year old and apparently it was looking in the mirror. Wow. Um, I finally wow. smiled at myself. But oh, the, wow. The smile quickly dropped away. Mm -hmm. um, it was, even then, happiness just felt unsustainable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So tell us about now, you said you were molested as a child. Mm -hmm. About how old at this point? Um, very early. I would say I was about three years old um, when it started, and it, it went on for several years of my mm -hmm. life. Okay, so then you talked about when you became a teenager, mm -hmm. where you were raped. Yes. She's been raped four times. Wow. I mean, we can't even wrap mm -hmm. our mind around no. that, can we? No, it's hard. It was my life. I lived it, and it's hard for me to wrap my mind around sometimes. So. Right. So you were assaulted mm -hmm. um, more than once. Yes. Right. And so um, you understand what it feels like to be in pain, but there was a place that you, you felt like you couldn't escape it. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, did you find yourself being drawn to people that were uh, I abusers? Did. I did, because it, it leaves you feeling so dirty and unlovable, mm. unwanted, oh. that when you start to find that there's someone who wants to show you some kind of affection or attention, you think even with the red flags, well, this is all I can get, this mm. is all I deserve. So you take it and you tolerate things that you normally wouldn't and that you know are wrong. Yeah. But that's all it feels like you're gonna get, so it's what you, yeah. So at that point, now you were raised, when you were a child, was it your grandmother that took you to church? My mother, um, took me to church. My grandma was always there. Uh, our family was just, I mean, it was every time the doors were open. We were there for revival, Bible school, wow. Sunday morning, Sunday yeah. evening, mm -hmm. Wednesday evenings. My mom even cooked the youth supper for the youth choir after their practice. And I was there for that part as well. Um, but it was, I was in an environment where I was being told, you know, that God wanted to use us, but then when it came time for me to approach wanting to be used, I was told I wasn't useful because of the trauma wow. and the heartache that I was going through. And that, it really cut a wound yeah. pretty deep inside my heart. So when you were told that you would never be useful because, I mean, you felt like you had been spent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that you could never, no one could ever love you mm -hmm. at this point. And now someone that you had confidence in even right. told you that, you know what, God's, he can't even use you. Just, right. in other words, be ready because you can't escape this. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, this is unavoidable because of all that you've been through yeah. that, that he could never use you. And so you had that in your mind. Now, mm -hmm. now because of that, what did you turn to? Alcohol, drugs. Um, I was able to get away from the drugs on my own, but alcohol became a, a huge stumbling block for me mm -hmm. and is something that I'm in recovery now, mm -hmm. but my recovery is still new because it's been such a struggle for right. me. Right. But one of the things about it is, is you dive into it wanting to numb that pain, to escape that trauma. And at first you, you think it's working, but eventually you realize it's just poisoning everything mm. inside you, including yes. keeping you from being able to open your heart and be responsive for God because you can't even be responsive for yourself or yeah. here on earth. Like for my That's children, right. I may have been present in the same room with them, but I wasn't present. Right. Mm. You know, I, I just wanted to add this that Jasmine, do you know that when you know, when the Bible says that drunkenness is sin and we, we talked about this and how we understand now why. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you know why? Because the frontal lobe of your brain mm -hmm. is your thought process. Right. And so what happens when you are drunk, you know, that, that frontal lobe is compromised. Yeah, mm -hmm. And so what happens? You do it, things. Yeah, you, it alters your thinking, your how you act. Like you do things you wouldn't normally do. You say you, all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us, yes. It all just, it changes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's and then become out of control and anger, mm -hmm. and it's like I did that. Yeah. And you know right. the word speaks about that, and that's because I mean it's a deception, and what the devil, mm -hmm. you know, in John ten ten, mm, the devil comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Absolutely. But yeah. Jesus said you could have life, right. and, and have, have it more it, abundantly. I've come that you can have life and have it more abundantly. <laughs> yes. And so that's what he was trying to do. And then mm -hmm. you had spoken over you that you'll you'll never be useful. Well, right. guess what, guys? God's using her right yes. now. Yes, yes, right. He's using her it. right now. Yes. And so. Um, Psalms 139, 9 through 10 says, If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Isn't that something? He's always And there. it's like that seed that was planted in you as a child. And you knew that God, I mean, he was still there. And mm -hmm. it's like you, you told me that, you know, no matter what, you, you, you saw all the things that you had gone through. Yeah. And he, you could not escape from his hands. Mm -hmm. You could not escape. Right. You know, nothing could separate you from the love yeah. of God. Right. It's like the image behind us. You know, I always felt him reaching out for me. Wow. Always. Um, even in the darkest nights, um, the overwhelming feeling that he was still there. Mm -hmm. Even when I tried running from him, even when I tried to escape him by living my own life my own way or when I simply tried to take control of the situation in my own life and not turn it over to him, he's still there. Isn't he's that something? There. I love it. So there's nowhere you can hide no. right. from God, is there? No. His love, no. his love no. is just, I mean, you can't, it's, we can't even comprehend how wide, how deep, right. you know, how broad his love is for us. It's, I mean, um, it, it's overwhelms us to think about mm -hmm. it because you didn't yes. feel love, did you? I didn't. She felt used up. And because she felt used up, she didn't feel like she was useful anymore, especially when right. that's spoken over you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is powerful. We're going to get to that transformation. Um, Psalms 139, 11, 3, or 12 says, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. <laughs> to you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. There's nowhere. I mean, he he knows all about yes. you. He know he's acquainted with all of our ways. The word mm -hmm. says he searches us. He he knows us, and but there's nowhere we can hide from him. Mm -hmm. John ten twenty nine says, "My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand." I love that, <laughs> Jasmine. What does pluck mean? It's to take by force for oneself. See, no one can mm -hmm. no one could take you. No. no. Out of his hand, you know, all, a lot of times we walk away, don't we? Right. We can walk away from the protection. We can get in environments and we can, um, you know, the Bible says bad company corrupts good manners, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You yeah. found that, right? Yeah. And we can find ourselves separated it, because we walk away. But he never, he snatched you out right. of the enemy's hand. And so, um, but this is what happened. This is what we want to get to, the transformation. And you've been clean since, uh, it's been a few months now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're finding... Uh, your father and God. And so what happened is you were invited to church. Yes. Tell me what happened. Take us there. Um, I came into church. I'd actually been struggling with finding a church home. And one of my really good friends at work had invited me to church with her before. But she invited me again. And this time I was like, well, where do you go? And she mentioned that it was here at Christ Community. Right. And I was like, wow. <sighs> because I had repeatedly had Christ Community Church show up. Across wow. my path, wow. doing searches for different churches and such. So I agreed to come with her that Sunday. And um, when it came for altar call, I came down front and pastor spoke over me how it had always been there. But it was like a bowl of alphabet soup. It was all oh, jumbled wow. up. And I couldn't make sense out of it. And for not ever knowing me or meeting me before, how accurate those words spoken over me were was just amazing and then he laid hands on me and prayed over me and I was slain in the spirit and you know I've been in church like I said my entire life and that was the first time that that had ever happened to me wow, wow. and you wondered if it was real didn't you I did yeah. I did just feeling like the presence of what, God right what is, what you is, see what other experience? people get to experience yes, it and you, right. you want it and I had craved it so, mm. so much my entire life but I was not fully opening my heart mm -hmm. so that God could move in it. And I'm telling you, man, when, when I opened my heart and I was really fully ready to receive the wave that washed over me. Wow. And like Pastor <laughs> said, you know, that, that morning, it was time for things to start clearing up 
start making sense and they yes. oh, praise God. <laughs> yeah. and you're just God has just I mean turned your life around and she is experiencing the true love of God and you know that you're useful you're yeah. fit for the master's yes. use yes. it's yeah. powerful and I love this so remember inescapable means incapable of escape and unable to be avoided or denied he was like you can't get away yeah, from me. No, nope. you can't <laughs> avoid me. I'm not denying you, yeah. but I've got you in the palm of my yes. hands. And so when you felt him, she fell into the arms of God, being slain in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, look, I've heard Rick say, you know, no man can see God and live. And look, right. one who created the heavens and the earth, when he touches you, something's going to happen. Yes. You may cry, yeah, you may laugh, you may <laughs> dance, yes. or you may be slain in the spirit, but it's like, and fire. I mean, it's like. It's like lightning. It just, it, and it just, you feel like that release, and you just fall into his arms, mm. and you feel so loved. Did you yes. feel so loved? Yes. <laughs> it's yes. amazing. And so, what you're looking at in these gorgeous, beautiful blue yes. eyes, it's brand new. These eyes are bright, and you are on. Let, let me tell you something. God, you haven't, God is going to do so much in your life, and you haven't yes. seen anything yet of what he's going to do in you. It's powerful. And so, um, this I'm, is just the beginning. It's just the, the beginning. Yeah. And so, would you say that even when you jumped in the water over your head, knowing that you couldn't swim what did he do he pulled you out anyway and he rescued you yes. rescued you from the deep you could not escape his love becca right and no matter what anyone else did to me they couldn't take me away from god mm. <laughs> that's right yes isn't that awesome yeah. and you know once you've tasted and once you've received him there's no i mean He's like, you're mine. Nobody's going to yeah. pluck you out of my hand. So, you know, what? Or, <laughs> we just got to surrender, right? right. That's right. <laughs> if, he's, if, if you're drowning and, and someone reaches in, you're going to reach out to get yes. them, right? right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's not going to hold. He's going to reach for you, but we have to reach back yes. and grab a hold of that hand. Right. He's not going to let you go in Jesus name. Well, so you have something else you want to say? Okay, so Jasmine, I want you to I come across this quote today, and mm -hmm. I remember it from years ago, but wanted to make sure I got it right. And it just is so fitting from Corey Ten Boom. This is what she said. There is no pit so deep that God's love, it, love is not deeper still. That's right. No matter <laughs> how deep you go, his love is deeper. deeper. So, deep. Becca, I know this is all brand new to you, but you understand the power of prayer. So I want you, if you would, to pray for those listening that may be experiencing, that may, may be in that place where you were at. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God's reaching for them. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take him by the hand. Would you lead us in prayer? Holy Father, I ask that you reach out to those who are hurting and suffering, those who've been told that they can't be used yes. or can never be loved again, those who have heard the lies yes. and have taken them to heart and let them break their spirit down, open their hearts, open their souls to your love, your grace, and your mercy. Yes. There is no greater feeling than letting that wash over you and take away that struggle. Yes. God, I pray that any of my words and my actions reach out to others who have hurt and been through pain yes. so that I can be a light for you and bring yes. glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love that. Becca, we love you. Yes, Send her too. some hearts up, will you? Send her some love. She's oh, one of your sisters. That's right. She's new in the kingdom. And I, I love this, you know, that... Uh, I've said it before, but you know, God doesn't, he doesn't um, measure or he doesn't measure you at your highest accomplishment mm -hmm. or judge you at your worst mistake. He loves you and he loves yes. you deep. Yes. All right. We love you all. Yes. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Look at all the